In this video, I'm sharing with you 20 Trello shortcuts or hacks to make your day more productive. Trello is a free application that helps you organize anything. I use it personally and for work purposes, and having it on my iPhone is really the key in making sure that I keep going with my day. Not only that, but I eliminate unnecessary distractions. So I say distractions, it's 2020, most of us have work from home situations, and if we're not, we're dealing with a lot of different things going on. Whether it be kids at home, people you have to help or take care of, or additional responsibilities at work. Trello's nice that we can go in and out of different areas within our life, whether it's a project such as making YouTube videos or making sure that you're keeping your kids' homeschool organized. So having it on your iPhone, the first shortcut or hack I would give you is to just make sure that it's as accessible as it can be. So the first one is to make sure that when you press down, if you press just a tiny bit harder, you have access to most recent boards. The second tip is to add a home screen widget. So if you swipe right on your iPhone, you have that little home screen widget right there that you have some really easy access commands such as creating cards, adding photos, and accessing those recent boards again. You can also add Siri voice commands. To be honest with you, I do not utilize the Siri voice commands, but that's something that you can also do to create a card. For example, if you have an idea for a YouTube video, you can ask Siri then to add that Trello card onto your list. Make sure that you're utilizing your calendar power up. That's an important one. Not only just making sure that the power up is added, especially if you have something that includes deadlines or that you need to complete each day. With that power up, you're going to also want to enable the sync on your desktop. You cannot do that just alone on the mobile device. You wanna make sure that that's on the desktop and that it's synced to your phone so you're able to get notifications for that deadline coming up. And you can also see it natively in that calendar when you're looking at what other deadlines you have, appointments, meetings. Make sure that you make use of starring boards. Star the boards that you most recently use. I always have a few different boards starred and then I'll go in and out based off of the project or the season and unstar them. And then also if you press slightly on the different boards within your Trello iPhone home screen, you can move those boards around so that you order them in the order of most important to you. My sixth tip is to use the home tab. So there's not just the boards tab where you're able to see an overview of the board, but if you go onto the home piece on the bottom towards the middle, you're able to then see all the cards that are coming up and the deadlines and anything that's recently been worked on. This is one that I use most often with homeschooling to keep track of what we're doing. I'm able to easily go into Trello, open up my homeschooling board and go to the card for the day, then attach the last photo taken, I believe it's what it's called, or I can take a photo directly onto that card. My eighth shortcut is to utilize Butler on the desktop. So setting all of these functionalities, whether it's the calendar or Butler, you're going onto the desktop to get that set up. So when you're on your iPhone, for example, if I finish shooting this video, I finish editing it, I have it over in the publishing list, I can then just check the check mark on I finished it for the due date. And then it's automatically going to be put over into the list of sharing. But there's a number of other things that you can do with on Butler. That's kind of a simple example. You can use searching boards. This is one that I use most often for recipes. I have a food board in which I keep all recipes that I find online. For example, tonight is Friday night. It's the day of I'm publishing this video. Uh, you can go into the board for food and then search for pizza and all of my different pizza recipes I found over the years will then be pulled up. My 10th shortcut is to make Trello look nice so that you're going to use it more often because really what we're trying to do in order for this to be a productivity app, you need to actually use it. And the things that look good or are more organized are ones that we're going to use more often. So add a background photo, add covers for your cards, add nice backgrounds for or everything. You can adjust even the icon look. You can adjust the color if it's light or if it's dark. The 11th point is a very similar point in that you need to make sure that that Trello icon is in a place that's highly accessible. It's in the most important place. I think I exchanged it for like where I would have put Facebook. I replaced a lot of the habits that I would do with Facebook and Instagram on my downtime. If I pulled up a tab, I'd scroll through Instagram. Now I scroll through my Trello board and see what it is that I should be working on next. The 12th thing is to utilize card syntax. So they have different different little symbols that you can add into the card description. The one that I use most often is either the bold syntax or the horizontal line. So you can divide things up within that card description. If you're on your phone looking through different articles or blog posts, you can send easily a link over to Trello to keep an eye on it or to add it to ideas. Whereas before I had a lot of different tabs going on in my Safari application. That way it just keeps things organized. Number 14 is to just simply hold onto a card drag and drop it up to the top of your 
Trello application that archives the card so you don't have to go through all the different steps of getting that card deleted. My 15th point again on your desktop is to utilize templates. You're creating the template on your desktop and when you're on your phone you don't have to go through the process of creating the card the same way every time. You can just pull from the same checklist, attachments, and everything if you're creating a new card. I use this most often on my daily gratitude board and then also on YouTube. My 16th shortcut is to, if you're on a recipe, this is one I don't do that often, but if I'm short for time, what I'll do, and it's a new recipe, I'll just copy all of the ingredients and paste it over onto the recipe card on my phone, copy it, paste it onto the recipe board on my phone that's on Trello on where the checklist is, and the checklist is going to automatically populate the different check mark boxes. So instead of just going into that one checkbox, it will then go tick, 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 down there and you'll have four different checkboxes, each for one ingredient. So when you're at the grocery store or doing your online grocery shopping, you can check off each box as you order the ingredients or maybe you have it in your pantry. My 17th tip is to attach documents, whether it's a Google spreadsheet or a Google doc. I use Google spreadsheets the most often. I have my budget and a spreadsheet and I'll attach it onto my daily gratitude list. It makes accessing Google spreadsheets, especially on an iPhone, so much easier. My 18th tip is to move multiple cards at a time. You hold down two fingers and you can move them together. My 19th shortcut is to toggle the zoom to either go zooming in or zoom out on your board. And then also one that I recently figured out where I was swiping left to get over to the end of the, the list or the lists to find my last list or to create a new list. There's a tiny little bar at the bottom, depending on the color of your board or what your background is, you might not be able to see it. So you kind of have to push it over a bit to the left. And then there's that little bar right there. You're going to scroll it all the way over. So it acts just like that sidebar scroll hidden at the bottom. So that just makes it a little bit easier to get to the end. And my 20th tip for using Trello on your iPhone as a shortcut is to use forms. So when you're on your desktop and you're setting things up, especially if you're a planner like me and you like to to track things. So for example, right now I'm tracking when I go to bed, when I wake up, and then if I put a video out, that's something that I could easily set up on a card through the forms component within Trello. And that's, I don't believe you can set it up on your iPhone. And I believe it's part of the power ups so that you can only use one or so if you're not just like a free person like me. There's a little box that shows you where to put the number in and you can just keep an eye on what you're doing at the end of the period of when you're tracking, you can then figure out how well you did. So that was 20 shortcuts or tips for Trello use on your iPhone. I hope it helped you out when you're here at, not my home, when you're at your home in 2020. And make sure that you subscribe and like this video. I have more Trello videos coming out in the month of December while I do my daily videos. Thanks guys.